Hello folks, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video, we're going to look at something that probably hasn't been seen in a really, really long time. We're going to look at VMIS, IBM's answer to Digital Equipment Corporation's dominance of office computing for small systems in the late 80s. If IBM had their way, we'd all be using VMIS and IBM 9370 mainframes. No one would have ever bought a VAX, no one would have ever touched VMS, but, you know, here we are, guess who won? Now, I want to preface this by saying this is not a complete VMIS system. This is actually going to be more of a demonstration of putting one together, because I think there's more merit to be had in seeing this system be assembled, and also seeing it in operation, so you can guarantee there's going to be a follow-up to this, where we actually look at the, I guess, final form of the system. <laughs> But we're actually going to focus on just trying to get the system up and going in this video. So let's go ahead and load this up. Now this is running on a, of course, 9375. Not real, of course. But we're going to go ahead and load it up and load up what we've got here. So first off, this is a relatively new uh, VM nucleus here. Now we don't want to change the clock. And we'll default to a warm start. Now this is a uniprocessor system. And also, rather than storing this on FBA disks, we're actually storing it on CKD disks. So if you know your mainframe hardware, you'll know there's two types of disks, or DASDs as they're called, CKD and FBA. We're actually doing CKD. Let's go through all this junk. And we can go and actually get a login screen. So we'll go ahead and log in as mate. Now this is the actual legit login screen of the system. I did not change the sysid from the default, so here we go. And right away we can go ahead and look at the big four system config files. Of course, being a VM370 based system, we have all these ridiculous assembly macros we have to edit. So, in this case, we generate a 16 meg system without attached processing and without multiprocessing. We don't care about either of those in here. But remember, we're supposed to be on a small system. <laughs> of course, if you want more 16 megs of RAM, you need to install VMHPO. Good look at the logon screen macro. There you go. Uh, let's see. We'll also do this sec uh, the real I.O. configuration for this machine. This is just a 3380 default that I modified a little bit to have support for like channel, channel adapters for TCP IP and such. And of course the dreaded segment table. I'm not even going to begin to talk about this but you're going to see this come up in a little bit. There's one for display write, uh, print services, there's one for VTAM that I modified. This is definitely not the standard one. Okay. If we go over and look at our operators console, speaking to VTAM, our SCS is yelling that it can't talk to v VTAM. Ah, that's okay. Alright, now I have a couple of drives, or I guess mini disks, attached to my user here. And there's a few interesting programs we can look at, but we're not going to sit around looking forever. We are going to get some stuff done, <laughs> like installing stuff. But. If I look at the user directory, we can come down here and so we have a variety of disks here for storing stuff. So we'll look at 319 and 361. So I do have a DCF script document, which I'm going to promptly make worthwhile. If you don't know script, imagine TROF, but IBM. Yeah, and this is the first thing we're going to have to troubleshoot. We need to figure out what is going on with that. So. I do have the script module. I actually have two. The one on the Y disk is the ridiculous original one. 
actually from the BM370 Community Edition. I just threw it on here as a backup. It's not really any good. Of course, the first thing we do is Death Store 16 Meg. <laughs> Always. Oh yeah, this is the original one. It does, in fact, work properly. But that's not the good one. Oh yeah, we just needed more memory. Typical. <laughs> now, this is... 3.5. This version, I don't think, supports PostScript output. It is not. Because it doesn't mention PS out. If it did support PostScript, it'd have a PS out option. This version only supports the IBM 3800 for graphics output, so we're not going to really bother with that. Also, you may be wondering, what in the world am I doing? Well, like I said, this is pretty much the only way you can get like a marked up document formatted on VM is you have to use this. You have to use script and .ce1 means center the following one lines space 2 means space out two lines ju on turns on justification and then anything after that just goes in a paragraph if you want to do a paragraph break you can do .sp2 again and uh, start a new paragraph but it's basically just TROF, which is like the precursor to LaTeX. If you know what that is, you've probably used it before if you're watching this. But we have a much better option available. How about DisplayWrite 370? <laughs> now, I fully believe that this is like completely lost software here. But DisplayWrite 370 is, for the most part, the first what you see is what you get editor on the mainframe for a document. And it, it, it works exactly like you think it does. It's a little bit hard to use, so we'll go into the help and get some help here. Uh, let's see. I want more quick help. Yeah, and that's the thing, is you can just get help pretty easily. This is not a hard, really a hard program to use. And you can just push F6 to spell check anything, or well, PF6. Of course, this isn't going to work because it's line broken, but in case you're wondering where does Microsoft Word's spell checker come from? Let's misspell that. It comes here. There you go. That's literally where it comes from, is display right. Now, granted, this is just DisplayWrite 370. There's also DisplayWrite for OS 2. There's DisplayWrite for the AS400. Uh, there's one for DOS. And there's the actual physical DisplayWriter. A video on that will eventually show up on this channel one day in the far future. And also, we can plug in a variety of commands, but they're not really that commandy. It's really more of like a menu of stuff you can try. Uh, let's see. Let me try that again, and then we'll try synonyms again. There you go. Pretty useful. And this has a huge Lexus file that you can use as a word index. But we're not here to mess around with this forever. We're here to try to install ISPF. So I already have a tape inserted into the tape drive. We can run instfpp install that. I definitely want to install this. Now this right here is going to blow your mind with how fast this is. This is like insane. Now this is not a full distribution of ISPF. This is a reduced version of it whose sole purpose is just to display certain dialogues, meaning you can't really use it standalone. And that's okay because that's kind of <laughs> what we expected. But nonetheless, we can auto log the ISPVM virtual machine. Yeah, I know there's 11 users on here. I mean, it's pretty typical. And we'll look at this other stuff after a while too, once we stop getting sidetracked here. And if all is well, oops, be gone. Oh, yeah, okay. 
And that's the thing, is it doesn't actually do anything. Sure, we have ISPF exec, but again, this isn't actually the original ISPF. It tells you right away it's it's been modified, which is a little unfortunate, I guess, but there you go. And yes, rather than being the service machine ISPF, it's ISPVM. This would actually end up being the standard if you have maybe you have a VMESA system like 1.2 or 2.1 or 2.4 or whatever or even if you have a ZVM system and you're still running ISPF you'll notice ISPVM not ISPF that's where this originally came from so we end up defining a bunch of files as in when I mean files I should probably say DD names because that's how this ridiculous stuff works yeah you guessed it not to be confused with script vs or DCF script. Release the iDisk, and then this command here actually invokes ISPF. And if we copy and paste it, you can see that it will technically work, but it just doesn't actually do anything. Oh, wait. Ah, yeah, it ends up releasing the disk. Okay, what in the world? I guess I need to generate that. Actually, we can just log in as ISPVM. Yeah, we don't actually have any modules generated. The only thing we have in D is a bunch of panels and execs that we can't really use, and a bunch of dialogue skeletons. And there's a bunch of macro libraries as well. Anyways, let's install profs. Yes, really. Just for fun, let's try to install profs. Which I know is a horrible idea. But let me throw the tape in. I think it's either 4 or 5. Let's see. We already have SQL data system installed. Oh right, we have SQL data system installed. Yeah, okay. Let's let's look at that just for fun while we're here. Actually, it's in SQL DBA, not the other. That that's it. That's all it takes. Now we can try to use it, but unfortunately. It won't work. Womp womp womp. Yeah, CMS return code is negative three. The actual problem here is the bootstrap module is missing. So there's an interesting way around that. And you might find it kind of ridiculous. Oh, yeah, sometimes that doesn't work either. That's a trick you can use on newer versions of SQL DS, also called DB2 server for VM. Anyway, this doesn't unfortunately work. I haven't gotten it working perfectly yet. So once I get this working, I'm actually going to do a whole showcase on SQL data system and DB2 VM, just a whole video on it, because it's a really interesting database. Oh, by the way, this is one of the first SQL databases ever. You had... System R, which evolved into DB2 on MVS, which we already looked at, it evolved into SQL DS here on VM, and it evolved into Ingress on Unix. So, pretty good stuff. All right, let's log back in as mate, and let us blow up our memory, or storage as they call it, which sounds ridiculous. Let me throw in the next tape that I think has what we need. No, I don't. Actually, sure, why not? QMF is dubiously useful. Uh, do you want to install the dialog? Definitely. No, we can't do that because it crashes on one single error because it can't print a file. Right, if we look back at the operator console, we need to scroll. 
All right, let's throw in the next tape that may actually have props on it. I should probably label the tapes, but I didn't. Uh, sure. Now this is this is VSE VSAM. I don't know why they wrote this out like this. No one says this, but you do need VSE VSAM. Uh, ACF VTAM. No, I actually already installed that and it already works. And that's it for that tape. Let's slot in the final one. Alrighty. Let's see what we got. Yep, professional office system program product. Let's do it. No time like the present. Okay, so hopefully you've maybe seen my video on Office Vision VM. This is the precursor to it before they renamed it to Office Vision. So the exec that will load the segment, everything on VM is all about the segments. You have to have the segment. Display Write 370, you can live without the segment. ISPF, you have to have the segment, and Profs also requires a segment. This is going to be sysadmin, this is pro DBM, uh, no, this is pro mail, pro DBM, calendar, pro ming profs. This is cr not correct. Yeah, it is. 406319375. This is our node ID and this is RSCS. Okay, so we're plugging a bunch of files onto mini disks now. And this has been automated to be a relatively painless install. Oh, what? Oh, we need a. Oh, great. We need to define ProDBM 5FD. Okay, well, there's a really easy trick to do that. <laughs> Edit the directory. Uh, no, hang on. I'm still in the installer. Okay. 5FD. This will do. We'll paste just for fun. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking I'm, I'm trying to make sure I have enough room so I don't overrun into another disk. We should be good. These passwords are required to be what they are. Okay, let's try it again now. Of course, we have to reinstall the whole thing. Thank goodness we're not on a real machine or we'd be waiting all day for this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, this is an emulated mainframe. I won't lie to you. The other videos, those are all real, but this is fake. Okay, now we... Oh, I forgot to do direct. Actually, we'll do this just to be double sure. Yep, that's good. Ignore this. This is just providing dumps. Although this will end up, this can actually corrupt your DASIs if you take a dump that's too big. Yeah, watch out for that. All right, third time's a charm, I guess. We're gonna have to add a lot more mini discs. I already, I already know how this goes. This is impossible to install, but it's really rewarding if you get it to install. It does print that message to script file, by the way. Okay, now we need Procal 191. Oh, uh... Okay, apparently... Oh, why did I close? Apparently I never added the calendar server. Oh, right, we can just repurpose this. I don't know why I changed it to SF batch or, and also SF cow. We are still printing that ridiculous file. One day we'll look at it. <laughs> It literally just prints every possible message. Who knows how long that would actually take to print our printer. Okay, Procal 5FF. Okay, do you know what the proper trick is? We read the installer. 
This probably would have been a good idea to do, you know, 30 minutes ago. Okay, so that, that tells us we also need 5FF and 5FC. And this is truly what you're supposed to do. Oh my goodness, okay, whatever, you know what, it's good enough. Okay, we have to scroll up and look at... Which one was it? Right there, Pro DBM. Three shape, tweet three shape, blah blah blah. If I can actually talk, that would be okay. We just have to start at cylinder 351 for this. Oh, uh, 25, just to be sure. I do them all 25. Sorry, my hand's in the wrong position on the keyboard. I just don't know how long this would take on a real system. You definitely would want to read the manual. A and I would read a manual if I have one, but I don't. That's the thing. Okay. 5FD. Oh, great. No one knows what that file was called. Let's reread this. Okay, so 5FF, 5FC, 5FE, 5FD, 5FD, 5FB, okay, CMS user, to 7191 Sometimes it helps to read through this. Um, I don't know what the right password is going to be for CMS either. Read, write, malt. Okay, that's fine. Okay, 5FF, 5FC, 5FE. We need 
two more lines for 5FD. B. Wow, I should probably put these alphabetically. That would just be splendid. I don't get paid enough to do that, though. In the real world, you would not want to waste all that DASD space on that. So we may get some link errors. We'll just have to plug in right for that password. Now this has, or this, I think this predates the split mail and mailbox approach. Okay, right password is right. Generating segment. System saved. Define your storage to one meg. And execute verify. Okay, I really doubt that that's gonna do anything. <laughs> Let's do it. So, sysadmin399. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I suspected. <laughs> um, I have no clue what that's supposed to mean, so let's just blow up or store it. Actually, let us log off, and let's log on to some of those uh, users. We need ProDBM. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's actually working. <laughs> Alright. Oh. I will be shocked. I will be legitimately shocked if this works. Alright, pro mail. I don't know why I have to manually type IPLCMS. This is I gotta edit the directory. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um OFSUAD. Um um, okay, this this means we need a link. Uh, the UAD is basically like the user index file or user something directory, user access directory. We'll just say that's, that's what it stands for. But what you actually have to do is you need to link... Uh, um, okay, you know what? We're gonna end. Or exit or stop or log off. <laughs> log in as sysadmin. The address of DCS is less than size of the virtual machine, whatever that's supposed to mean. We're gonna have to update that segment file and resave the segment probably 50 times before this will actually work. But anyways, uh, we need to look for... Okay, we have to find that. That is like critical. Actually, maybe it's on the database manager. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, UAD console. Okay, yeah, there's all the users that's on here. So we need to end, exit, quit, halt, shut down, whatever. Oh, good grief, there's like a zillion disks. Okay. Um, okay, alright. So that disk 395 needs to point to this user here. So, Procal 395 points to ProDBM 191.
Uh, okay, we need to plug this in on literally all of these. I have no clue why I did not do that. Actually, just for fun, we're going to... Wait, this is the database manager. We don't want to do that. We want to do it on the mail router. Um, 390, or, okay. Okay, so the distribution manager is running. Now I gotta do calendar server let's see what errors this has okay so this wants also 395 okay wait oh there we go okay so this is working. Okay, that is pretty good. Um, that is... Just console. <laughs> Missed so many directory loads. That worked a lot better than I expected. So let's log back in as sysadmin. Um, okay. What does that even mean? The address of the DCSS is less than the size of the virtual machines that the DCSS cannot be attached. What? Okay, DTR IPF. Yeah, that's not gonna happen because we don't, remember, this is the modified VMIS version. And unfortunately, I actually don't have that tape. Yeah, you know, I guess it is what it is. We'll, we'll make it by without it. We still allegedly have a functioning props install here, we just can't use the darn thing because of the segments. Now, the proper thing to do here is to crack open a manual, you know, the manual I don't have, and read the manual and figure it out. Alright, so we need to massage this a little bit and figure what out, figure out what this piece of junk is doing. Yeah, this is um, VMIS version 5, by the way, in case you believe or thought I was faking it. No, there it is. <laughs> um, customer applications. If you install some third-party stuff that was prepackaged, it would go on there. Yeah, we don't have a VMIPF, of course. Okay. So... Profs module and B. What we're going to try to do is resave the segment. At least as good as we can. The address of the DCSS is less than the size of the virtual machine, so the DCSS cannot be attached. Oh, I just remembered something completely ridiculous. Hold on. We have to verify that, oh yeah, we don't have IUCV. Okay, so what we have to do here is IUCV allow and also IUCV any. Without that, we're not going to really be able to use this. And the reason for that is this is basically IPC on VM, is inter user communications vehicle. That's also called IPC VM, by the way. I, I'm sorry, I was reading and talking at the same time. AppC VM. <laughs> uh, 
No, oh, we need two. Please don't throw an error. Okay. Now, we need to consider what the problem is at hand. This segment is actually running out of the VM. So, in other words, the load address is that, it's, it's in hex, and this is being stored on VM pack 1. Also, the DMK SNT entries that you have here are extremely uh, out of date. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up and see if I can find the actual segment sizes. Okay, so I ended up deliberating this for about 45 minutes, um, and here's kind of my thought process here. The segment is correctly sized, so let's work through this and see what there is. On the C disk of sysadmin, by the way, I'm logged in as sysadmin now, uh, not mate, there's a bunch of useful stuff. So there's stuff to generate the calendar module, there's something to prime the calendar, to move it from another system, to clean up the database manager, to generate the database manager, to dump out the database. This right here is going to come back to haunt us in a little bit because we're going to look at that. Uh, there's a verification script. And then ZipGen generates the mail router. So let's look at this exec here. Oh. oh yeah, we can't do that yet. Okay, so of course it's written in exec two. Um, okay, so what this does is regenerates it does two things. It loads a segment and it generates a new profs module. Now, if you're really clever, you can generate the profs module with all of those loaded. And technically, we can do that. So we're going to try... Okay, so let's walk through the logic of this. So we load this DCSS thing that has a bunch of junk in it. Then we start at this symbol. And if that's okay, proceed. Then we generate the module from from this symbol range. So if my theory is correct, we can load OFS DCSS E and then start it. Maybe. Let's try it. Ah, oh, okay. Mm, I guess we'll just use the... Man, it sucks not being able to paste. Say system failed. Oh, great. Okay. That's ridiculous.
Let's check that again. Okay, that's just a load map. That's set to hmm, that's strange. It's not generating the profs module. That is made today, but yeah, so it just, it silently saves it for you. A dress of the DCSS is less than the size of the virtual machine, so the DCSS cannot be attached. Maybe I have too much storage? Okay, that was not something I expected to work. <laughs> I legitimately did expect that to work. Okay, well here it is. <laughs> Props, I guess. You have to shrink your memory in order to use it. I don't know, that's so dumb. Okay, well here we are. We have the probably the first working props in like 30 years. Let's try it. <laughs> PR administrator. <laughs> Yep, that's me. Let's work with the schedule. Holy crap, it actually works. View the calendar. Okay, hang on. We gotta try something. Uh, test event or whatever. Hold on. I can't believe that actually works. This is so bad compared to the newer Office Vision calendar. Oh, wow. Okay. Conference room schedule. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Open the mail. Profs is on the air? Holy smokes, that probably hasn't been seen in ages. Okay, press the key for a document you want. Yeah, please view the document. Today, Profs has been successfully installed using the VMSP system installation facilities. Please reply regarding this significant event in our enterprise. Congratulations. You're very welcome, person in 1987. <laughs> I totally knew what I was doing doing that. Okay. Okay, I hate how the keys are different. Let's see, this looks like it's formatted using script. That's the thing. Um, we'll look at that later. And copy the document to storage. Which means throw it onto Minidisc. Um, let's throw that into Xedit. It's probably already formatted. No! No, it is. Okay, what am I saying? Of course it's already formatted. It's just formatted carriage control. Okay, find documents. Okay, that is not something I do. Process notes. Uh, we'll process documents. Okay, this is going to be difficult because we can't prepare an author profile because we don't have ISPF. But we can definitely try. Um, well, there we go. Yeah, you have to. There's a command to define an author profile and a database manager, but it's really kind of difficult to do. Um, prepare documents from other sources. Okay, technically we can import a document using this. But we, won't, we won't do that yet. Process the mail log. Actually, we will send a message to I think that's the correct format yeah there we go 
Okay, and uh, we'll also send a note. Alright, and then we need to... F7 to send that. And now if I go back one... Open the mail. Okay, so we do have a problem. And no one knows what that means. It's possible that my version of CMS is too new. This was causing problems earlier with some other stuff. But let's log off of this. Let's log in as CMS user. Uh, CMS pass, I think is the password. And we are going to link sysadmin399399 read our admin. We're gonna run profs. What? Oh. What? Oh yeah. There we go. So in theory, I actually have a calendar entry there. Yeah, it works. We can also do PR administrator. No, it was something weird like that. It wasn't actually that. Oh well. Nonetheless, I think this is pretty good. I mean, this is, for what it's worth, this is the original profs. Now, I, I legitimately don't think this is as good as Office Vision 1.4, because this is what, profs 1.5? Um, I don't think this actually works as well. The automatic reminder facility is junk. It literally doesn't work well. Also, it's not Y2K compliant. <laughs> Sorry, it's 1923. It definitely feels like it's in 1923 with this software. Uh, but no, it works really well, I think. I mean, we totally had a working uh, thing there. Hold on, let's, let's see if we can figure out how I go into QV store. Okay, I have 1K of storage. So that's, okay. Process knows. We'll send a note to... We'll do to ourselves. Now if I leave, we can actually peek the note. Note that it is like, not the same. The format is message as opposed to like, net data. Net data is like the standard, if we do like the note command. Like, hang on, note CMS user. You know what, that's all we need. Uh, F5, if we look at this, this is net data compared to this, which is message, and it is an actual profs note. So we can try this again, but we know that that's app ending for some reason. Fortunately, there's a command or an exec we can use to regenerate that, so let's regenerate that. Just for fun. Okay, we definitely need to drop our storage, but our storage is 16k or 16 meg and we need it. Um gen reader. Uh what disk is it? No, it's definitely somewhere. What? How did I just suddenly forget what disk this is on? 399, 398, 298. We have all the disks accessed. That is... I am going insane right now. Hold on. Um... Uh... Um, <laughs> uh, EPS star exec, there we go. No, but none of this is it. How did I lose that exec? Oh, it's on disk K. Okay. Yeah, this right here is like the, well, the object disk. Oh, it's, okay, sorry, it's, 
XYZ Jin. Okay, let's do Reader Jin. Let's see what this does. This is Journey to OFS Reader Module. Do I need to change OFS Reader Assembly or... Okay. Sure, why not? Like, I totally need to do assembly programming right now. How many modifications? How old is this program? Hold on. 1983. This is well over. This is well, not well over, but this is extreme. This is 40 years old. Wow. Okay. Um. Okay, so it just grinds through the reader queue, and then spits out stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's just a pretty run of mill. All right, let's do it. Okay, yeah, so that's obviously gonna fail. Okay, copy of reader. copy is on your A-disc, you will see no new mail. Why? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> oh, I still have that problem. Whatever, I'll fix it later. I think this is enough. This has been going on far too long. But anyway, there we go. If you sat through this, you presumably now know how to install profs on VMSP. <laughs> So you can get a hold of the tape for it. It's honestly not that bad. It's about as difficult as installing Office Vision 1.4. Office Vision 1.4 is a lot more usable though, because it actually has like SMTP support. One thing about this old version of Profs is that it doesn't actually uh, support talking to the SMTP server, so you can't actually use it like on the internet. Now with Office Vision 1.4 though, as long as you have fetch mail, you can actually like check your email using that and just set up postfix as a mail relay we might look at that someday in the future but i think this has gone on for far too long as is so y'all have a good one thanks for watching and if you have any future suggestions please let me know I'll, I'll be glad to do whatever future suggestions anyone watching this may have and i will see y'all in the next video